The time has come for me to be able to lift 2,000 pound totes with my tractor. We have a tote that was shipped today and it'll be on its way here, arrive anytime. In order to do that, the power of the tractor is no problem, but the weight of the tractor is. Uh, the last time I tried lifting a 1,500 pound tote, it lifted the back wheels up off the ground, so we don't want to do that. I'm going to be building a counterweight. In order to do that, I need to build a form so that I can pour concrete in. And I bought a three-point hitch that'll go on the back of the tractor that I will embed in the form and in the cement. So that is my cheat code, if you would, to make this form without having to do a whole bunch of measuring and leveling. Basically just bury the three-point hitch in the concrete. So not the three-point itself, but an actual hitch. So I should probably go unbox that and show you what that looks like. So this is just a cheap, probably Chinese part, completely worthless for what it's actually sold for, to be a hitch. Uh, I saw pictures of people who had bent these things up, they'd gotten all twisted, mainly around the area where it should be strong enough to haul a trailer. So I saw this area is all twisted. Would not recommend that you buy this as an actual hitch, but it'll be plenty strong for what I need it to do. All I need it to do is connect up to my three-point hitch, and then from there, I'll be able to lift this, hopefully about a thousand pound counterweight. All I'm gonna do is bury this in my form, pour the concrete over it, and I also got an extension for it because I got a hitch extension, which will basically just go in there to give it more stability. And the only thing that's gonna be sticking out are the pins on the side, and then this jobby on the top. That is the technical term for this. Basically what we're gonna do is build this box. It's gonna be 21 inches wide. I believe what I decided to do was 24 inches deep and 26 inches tall. So this isn't going to be buried completely. It'll be buried. The bottom of this will be about at the 10 inch mark, somewhere around there. We need these to be 24 by 26. So we'll mark 24 inches here. And this doesn't have to be perfect. I mean, I'm not too worried about this being exactly 24 inches. As close as possible, of course. I'm marking these because they're gonna be just a little under two feet. And I can still use these since I've got two that are just a squeak over two feet over there. I'm gonna use these for a piece that is gonna go on the, the front and the back end of this form. It only needs to be 21 inches wide. So why 24 inches wide? I'm going to let the edges of this hang out, meet those up wherever 21 inches is gonna be. The inside is 21 to 21 inches. I'm going to put a little board in there and drill through here into the board and through this one into the board. And that is gonna hold the form together, just make it a lot stronger. And that way I'm gonna get perfect corners lining up, perfect corners on my form. All right, so you'll see how when this goes together, how we're gonna get a 21 by 24 by 26 inch form out of this. We're not matching these up corner to corner. We're gonna match two of these up so that the inside dimensions are 21 inches. So this is not 21 inches wide, 20 and three quarter inches wide. So I made the appropriate marks here. Now I just gotta draw a straight line between these two, line this up so that the inside lines up with that straight line. This is the only part that has to be exact. So basically I'll know if I'm off, if when I get two sides on here, I can't fit that. First thing I'm gonna do, 26 inch chunks out of this. One short piece isn't gonna matter too much. We'll go ahead and just use it as it is. Line this up, perfectly aligned with that one. No gap. What I'd really like here is like two inch screws. We got these two and a half inch screws. Almost go through, so we are, we're only gonna just bring these into this. So we'll go ahead and do or one here, one there, and then we'll go from the other side and screw those in for a little more strength. Just before flush, that's all the further I want them in. I mean, this is from here to there, 
just over two and a half inches, so I don't want this going through. We'll run two more screws in like this. All right, nothing came through, so we're good. All right, so then that's going to be what we use. Screw this to this. So same thing, we'll get a couple screws in there. Then we'll move on to the other side once we get both sides at least attached. That's when we're gonna come back. Ah, and it did just come through on that side. You can feel it, so we'll have to be careful of that so we don't give ourselves a big old scratch. In case you're wondering what we're gonna use for the bottom, we're gonna put a couple of these pieces together on the bottom, but that'll be the last step. Now we're gonna do the other side. Yeah, and we're using the shorter one, so that's fine. One thing I forgot to mention was that we want to make sure this is real nice and tight. It's probably obvious we're using this as a form to pour cement in, just in case there's any doubt. Yeah, we do want this to be nice and tight so that we're not going to have a bunch of cement pouring through those. Now in hindsight, something I wish I had done is put these on both ends at the same time because here's the problem now. Now I've got to hold this with one hand rather than let gravity do its job and just have it sit there. I didn't mention this before, but you do want one side. Just one side has to be perfectly flush, and that's the bottom. Won't have any concrete leaking out. The other thing that you are going to want to keep in mind is getting this flush is more important than getting everything else perfect. So we're gonna make sure that the bottom is lined up on that line. That's good. All right, so you see the top was off. Don't care about that as much, but we can get it lined up where it needs to be. Okay, now we just need the bottom. So we've got two straight edges there, we can line those up. Pretty much seals. All right, I just wanna get a couple screws in there to hold these in place. What's really gonna hold them in place is a couple more boards. So we need 20 inch boards. Just a two by four. Minus the plywood, all this other lumber I have is rough cut stuff that I got from a friend with a lumber mill. I'd say it is so perfect, I'm probably not even gonna have to drill holes or do anything. All right, good news, that is not hollow, so I don't need to worry about drilling holes and then attaching the pins, because once I get that in there, once I get that wedged in there, it's gonna be so tight, we're not gonna have to worry about any concrete getting in there, so. I just need to get it at the right height and positioned exactly where it needs to be in the, in the form. So we're gonna do a little, uh, take a few measurements on the old coyote, and we're gonna see how far back it needs to be and all that, so. All right, so here's the idea with this. We've got this setting in there, the exact height that I want it to be at, which is about 13 and a half inches. Just a little over 13 and a half inches. I wanna make sure that that's the same on each side, 13 and 3 quarters, 13 and just shy of 3 quarters. So if we get this level, all we're going to have to do once we break the mold off, screw some pins in either side, and we're set. So this is a super simple build. Don't even have to drill through the form if this works the way it should. I had thought about putting some silicone sealant around here just to keep any concrete out, and then I thought, you know what? If there's a little bit of concrete there, I can chip away it with a hammer, maybe a chisel. I don't think we're going to have any problem whatsoever with concrete 
getting in there. And if I'm wrong, I'm wrong, and it's a lesson learned. But we've got this that is just about as level as you're gonna get it. So I'm excited to see how this is gonna turn out. I suppose I better make sure that we are exactly three inches from the edge. So we're three inches from this side to the hitch. We are 13 and three quarter inches from the bottom. And the total height of this is 26 inches. So we're just a little over, yeah, we're about halfway into the concrete. And then once I fill the concrete up enough, I'm going to stick this in there. And that's gonna create some more stability through the entire thing. And I'm not even gonna worry about that pin. That pin isn't gonna matter. This is gonna be full of concrete it's going to be solid. So this is just to add a little more stability through the block of concrete. It's probably overkill. I probably could have just used some rebar. This was simple. This is too simple. So yeah, a little bit more expensive, but we are going to be a lot simpler in the long run. So just a couple of measurements, make sure everything's straight. Got to get on to mixing concrete next. Got a one quart jar here. Anyway, from here on out, it's just going to be mixing bags of concrete. That can't be too exciting. Well, it's been about 36 plus hours since I poured this. I'm going to go ahead and remove the mold and see what it looks like. Still got a ways to go to completely cure, but I believe we can remove the mold now. Go ahead and start with the sides. Looks like those made it. They didn't get filled in with concrete, so I was right. All right, the other side too. Oh, we got a little bit of concrete in there. So I'm gonna have to try to carefully chip that away. Oops. It's going in. Just need it a little bit cleaned out. Let's give it a try, see what happens. Well, there we go. 1,008 pounds of concrete, not including this. Um, I might have to go uh, see if I can get this on a scale someday, but man, that's just scary looking at that thing. A thousand pounds of concrete, boom, like that. I couldn't even budge it and this tractor lifts it. So this is gonna be, this is a counterweight where I'll be able to lift probably over 2,000 pounds. Whoa, glad there wasn't a dog under there. Pumpkin. She's over there. It's nice and smooth under there. I'm very, very happy with this. Not much else to say other than I definitely recommend building this counterweight. Based on what I've seen others build, they work. But this was so easy, so simple. So our feed is here and Brandon gets to test out how his counterweight is going to do. I think he's pretty excited about it. So let's go watch.
glad that I went with a thousand pounds because this was a little over 2,000 pounds. I think it was about 2,100, 2,130. We lifted it. I wouldn't say no problem. I'd say carefully, very carefully. All right, so this did the job. Gotta say, I'm impressed with myself. I did a thing that I've never done before. Yeah, I didn't do the greatest job pouring this concrete. We got some spots here where, so I'll, fi I'll have to figure out how to avoid this in the future. If anybody knows how to avoid this, I, I can stick my finger in that. So how do I avoid the voids? If anybody knows, leave a comment on this video. Let me know how to avoid that. It served its purpose. It allowed me to lift 2,000 pounds. That's all I needed it to do.